with the Reverend Run right now on the Talk of the Town. Rev, how are you? What's happening? Ain't no thing. <laughs> we just played, just played a little bit of your uh, famous Christmas song there and uh, getting us in the holiday spirit. Although it's tough in the Northeast, I don't know where you are. We got no snow. We have no snow either. Two days ago it was so hot out you could have went outside with shorts. It makes no sense. <laughs> where you know what? I'm not going to argue with it. Where are you located? Well, I'm in New York. I'm, I'm living in New Jersey, but I'm you know 20 minutes from New York. Um, there was absolutely, it was hot outside. Yeah. Was, I went outside with my coat and had to put it in my trunk. I know. I felt it. stupid with a coat on. <laughs> I know. Isn't it odd? The other day I had the sunroof open and the windows down, and here we are in December. I was thinking of this the other day, as you just mentioned, being you know in New Jersey and you know the New York City area. Our state, typically, you know, up you know upstate or somewhere in the Adirondacks, have some form of snow at this point, but we have nothing. Well, I'm happy with it. You know, all it, for me as a kid, it was fun, but for now, I got to get the shoveling guy. I got to worry about my car being all slushed out and it's just it's a little bit of a hassle so i'm grateful so uh, we don't want to break this great weather so we'll just talk positivity over this area and just say continue to stay warm i'm, I'm with happy you. and uh, if you're going to buy the plow buy the per plow basis this year not the entire season it looks like it's going to be one of those kind of years uh, all right <laughs> talking to that. talking to the reverend run on the talk of the town with dave jay and sam today and you mentioned the location you're in right now but this new venture that you're taking on uh that just premiered traveling around the world a little bit with the family tell us about that reverend well you know as we're in run dmc right you travel and you get off the tour bus and then you go into the venue and then you're back on the tour bus or to a hotel real quick so over the years, my wife would say, oh, Joe, you've been to London, you've been to Thailand, oh, you've been to Tokyo, and they'd ask the questions, so, Daddy, what, 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 what do you know about this place in London? I'm like, I've never seen it. You know, like, what did you do in Rio? Where did you, you know, and I, I wouldn't have any answers because it was all a blur. From touring, you don't really get to see the town. So I was like, all right, let's all go to these places. And then another conflict happened. When we got to the places, I wanted to chill by the pool and everybody had a different idea what a vacation is. I'm trying to order a pot of coffee, room service. My wife is trying to go to a coffee plantation in Jamaica. <laughs> so the, thus the conflict begins. You know, we get to Dubai. I'm looking, just trying to check out the cars. She's looking at camels. I'm like, you know, this is, you know. And then another conflict, you know, they call a place Dubai. I'm thinking it should be called Don't Buy. She's trying to buy everything. I'm like, Dubai or not Dubai? That is the question. <laughs> You know, so I, it was like a little bit of conflict with the fact that I really wanted to chill, and it didn't happen that way because happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. So they got me out looking at minky whales in the middle of Iceland, and um, so it's so cold in Iceland that the whales don't even want to come put, peek their head up above the water. So, you know, we're out in there for hours waiting for one whale, and the whale looking at me like, it's cold. I ain't coming up there to look at you, man. <laughs> so we, we had a little bit of conflict trying to figure out what we should be doing, but I did what I was told. So in the end, they dragged me around, and I, I got to see everything that I didn't see. So I guess it was for my own good. And uh, you mentioned some conflict there, but it is with your family, and you are a well-rooted family kind of guy. What's it like, you know, bringing your family along on some of these ventures that you've been in, the other TV shows that you've been involved with, and now this one? Well, you know, the first show that we had on MTV was called Run's House. Mm -hmm. And... This is like run outside the house. So it was, it was, it's always fun you know, when you can not only be with your family on vacation, it's also I'm blessed that in this phase of my life I'm working with my family. So it's a, um, a blessed situation to be in, to be able to wake up you know, in somewhere in London and, and there is your kids and they're happy and they're like, Daddy, let's go out, let's do this. So it's a, you know, all in all, it was a really fun time. And um, they they learned a lot. I learned a lot that I didn't learn running around with Run DMC. So it was fun. It was it was an incredible um, gift from God to be able to travel, create a show, and to see all the places that you know I, that was a blur to me. How was the Run, the Reverend Run, the Reverend DJ Run name? How'd that come about? Well, as as Run, you know, I, I hit the very top of the charts. You know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And to tell you the truth, my top was my bottom because after you, you think you acquired everything 
that you want in life, which is the accolades and all the people screaming your name and the money, there's a part of you that feels a little empty. And that part was missing, you know, the spirituality. So you start going to church, and, and the next thing you know, I got so into it, it because I'm a pretty passionate guy that um, my studies continued in church and I ended up becoming a rev, not knowing that, you know, my pulpit would end up being MTV, not owning a church. Because mm -hmm. next thing you know, I'm, I'm showing people, you know, how the gifts of God on my television show by looking at my lifestyle. And it ended up being that, you know, my pulpit is all these different um, TV shows and showing people healthy family values. We have a, a book called um, Take Back Your Family, A Message to America's Parents, which did really well for me. And my message, my ministry ended up being just talking to people through shows and through Twitter and Instagram and social media. And, and you lost one of your group mem members, Jam Master Jay. How does your faith translate into uh, you know, dealing with a situation like that? Well, losing Jam Master Jay was hard for me. Um, I definitely needed to have faith in God when that whole situation went on, you know, to comfort not only myself and others, but his family members. And when we go out with Run DMC every once in a while, we go out a couple times a year, we bring his sons with us. Um, one of his sons' name is, right after him is Jason, and he calls himself Jam Master Jay Son, which is kind of a, a play on words. And then his other son, TJ Mizell, um, also DJs with us, and he's ASAP Ferg, who's ASAP Rocky's friend, He's his DJ, so the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. So I have his kids out on the road, and they do a tribute to their dad when we do perform. And we performed a couple of places. We performed the Riot Fest. We performed um, which at Jay-Z's um, Made in America. And Ron Howard directed a, um, a really good documentary of the Made in America series, and Run DMC performed. So, it, you know, it's giving back to the people and being able to still hold it down, and to have DJs like his sons behind us is pretty cool and fun. Uh, and, you know, maybe sticking with your faith a little bit, uh, Run DMC, really instrumental hip-hop group coming up. And I think what is really important is that you guys really didn't use – uh, you know some of the tactics you see today with with violence. You didn't rap about uh, guns and drugs so much, um, you know, but more of, of the culture and you know your your art. You have a translation of what you see today. How do you think the industry or just music in general is going? Well, you know, it's it's, it's like anything. It's just like movies. You can pick what part of hip hop you want to listen to. You can listen to Kendrick Lamar, whose lyrics are incredible and and great and you know, Drake has some really fun um, new ways of rapping when he sings and raps at the same time. I like, um, I think Kanye West and Jay-Z, they put together an album that was pretty cool. So you just have to pick and choose what you want to listen to. But there is some stuff out there that's worthy of a listen, you know. You just have to find what, you know, what in rap you do like, you know. So for me, it's like anything else, it's like picking a movie or picking where you want to hang, you know, because you have choices and... um I'm, I'm I'm grateful to be a pioneer in the rap industry, and I'm I'm thankful for some of these guys that are out there now, still carrying the torch. Yeah. Now uh, you mentioned Drake. Have you heard President Obama doing Hotline Bling? By the way. No, I didn't. Is oh, that check. That oh, just happened? yeah. Check this out. We've put this together here. Uh, I think you'll like it. President Obama Hotline Bling playing it for the Reverend Run. This is pretty cool. Check this out. Check it out. Here it is. You I used to call me on my cell phone late night when you need. My love, call me on my cell phone, late night when you need my love, and I know when that hotline blink, that can only mean one thing. How about that, huh? I know y'all made that, put that together. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky to rock a rhyme, to rock a rhyme, that's right on time. That was definitely very tricky how y'all put that together. <laughs> Reverend, thanks for your time. Best of luck with uh, Rev Runs Around the World coming to the Travel Channel. Yep, Travel Channel Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Travel Channel.